Welcome to FinSuite Cookie Consent for Webflow. I'm Joe Krug, founder of FinSuite. I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about cookie consent in Webflow. Welcome to the clonable walkthrough. In this video, we're learning how to use our Webflow clonable build to copy paste components into your project. This is going from step zero, we're going to clone the project, we're going to look at everything you need to understand and getting those components over to your build. This is great for beginners, this is great for people who want a quick solution. If you are stuck, if you stop and skip a couple of these steps, please just watch this video and it will tell you everything you need to know. Great, let's go in and clone this. Check out all of these versions we have for you, different styles, different everything, and we will look at how to make this happen. I'm here in the docs in the example section, and I'm going to get the Webflow Showcase clonable. Here we go. I now will clone this. Let me zoom out here for you. And I'm going to clone it. And sure, let's make it Joe's Marvelous Project. We will clone... And now we have access to five different versions of all the components you need in the FinSuite Cookie Consent for Webflow system. Version one, two, three, four, and five. Let's look at what these look like. These are the components. We have everything we need here. We have the banner component, we have the manager component, and we have the preferences component. In five different versions, we needed to make sure that there were no class conflicts. No class conflicts when you copy and paste into your build and no conflicts between the different versions. So if I make an update to version one, it will have no influence on version two, three, four, or five. So you can play with these separately and not worry about them updating each other. If you do play with these, please make sure that you're aware of the data attributes. If you click on elements, if you click on the components, you'll see that there are attributes all throughout these elements. And that is what makes these come to life. That's what makes the library interact with these components in a cookie consenty way. So make sure if you're making changes to this, you're not touching the attributes, you're not deleting the attributes. And if you do, understand the documentation. All right. Let's look at how we name these classes. If I go into this version one, we see a prefix everywhere of FSCC. We have FSCC banner, manager, and prefs component. And if I open this up, we will see a logical naming system that clearly makes these elements part of this component. So we have the FSCC banner container, the banner text, banner buttons wrapper, banner text link, and so on. And if I go to open the prefs, you'll see FSCC prefs, even prefs space small, prefs option, prefs submit hide. Why did we do this? This is first, so there's no class conflicts when you go and paste it into your build. FSCC will make sure that happens. And then we wanted to make sure that the classes and elements were specific to their components. So in six months from now, after you've implemented this and you go and see a class in your build called FSCC banner button and FSCC button alt, you know exactly what is what that's doing and what that is part of. So FSCC prefs option, we know that's part of the FinSuite cookie consent preferences and that is the option element. Excellent. Now, when we go to, let's say version two, the same exact mentality with a two. So all of these elements have the two, the two. And if I go to four, you guessed it, they have the four prefix. Great. All right, now let's go and look at copy and pasting these elements. Before we actually copy paste, we're going to have a quick message for all of you option one informational cookie message users. If you're using option one informational cookie message, you do not need to have several of these components because option one informational message does not have any management options. You're not accepting or denying cookies. You're just okaying cookies. So if you are an option one user, 
you are going to go and remove the manager component and remove the prefs component. Also, you would go and remove some of these buttons. I would remove this, I'd remove this, and you can either remove this one or this one, whichever one you want. Because as option one, we only are telling the user this, and then we are just saying, great, good for it. Got it. One of those. Great. But let's assume you are not option one. Now we're going to take all these components back. I will undo everything that I just did. And I think I'm fully undone. Great. Okay. Oh, one more. There we go. Okay. So now we're all back to normal. And we're going to take this div and we're going to copy paste it into our other project. This could be a brand new project. This could be a project that has been live for years with 50 pages. It doesn't matter. It's going to copy paste, no problem. So I take this div containing all the elements and I will go into my build and I will paste it. There we go. No class naming conflicts, no problems, no issues here. And now we need to do something important. We have a message here for you. Set all components to display none and use this div to create a symbol. This is a message for you. After you paste this in, this is what you should be doing. Do not do this. Do not set this to display none and think that this is going to work because it is not going to work. This should be your symbol element and each one of these should be set to display none. So let's first go and change this ridiculous class name. It's just a message. We do not want this. I'm going to call this FSCC components. Great. Now we have a clear and logical class name. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. And as the directions recommend, I will go and set this to display none. Now, if you don't set these to display none, everything is still going to work. You're just going to see a little bit of a flash before the page loads of these components. In case you forget to put them to display none, we do that for you, but set it to display none in designer so we do not see that flash. Now I'm going to go and set this as a symbol. Why? So that when I go to another page in the build, we'll go and create an about us page. All of these will say, stay synchronized. Excellent. Let's go back to the home. We're going to go into here and we're going to go and create a symbol. This will be FinSuite CC components. And I would recommend spelling it correctly. Doesn't matter here. So we have our componenters and the componenters will go on every page in the build. This is important because every page in the build needs to have this cookie consent system. If somebody lands on your homepage, great, we know that that happens a lot. But if somebody lands on your legal page or your about us page, it needs to have this system on it. So go ahead and put this on every single page in your build. Great, so now we have our components in the build. This is going to work. Let's go and look at some light customizations that we can make easily. Let's open up these components and see a couple of things that we can do here. Let's go and open this up and let's go and set our banner to display block. So our banners display block, let's go and look at the edits that we can make here. First, if you're using option two or three, go ahead and remove this close button. This is mostly here for the option one users who may want an X button for their informational message. But for us, we're going to remove this. We're doing option three. Option three is what we recommend for full cookie compliance. All of these have the attributes applied. So I do not recommend changing the buttons and adding new elements to this. Instead, you can go and change the color here. So let's say our color is this green or something more accessible like this red. Excellent. I can go through and make these updates all throughout the component. And that is just fine. So go ahead and customize this as you need. You can go and make this look exactly like your site. You can change the colors. You can change any styles you want here. Just be aware of 
removing elements and then removing those attributes that are on the elements. And that's all we need for styling. I don't think there's anything else. So let's go into site settings and look at this part two, which is applying our attributes to script tags. I'll show you how easy this is. Let's go into site settings and make it happen. We're in site settings in the custom code section, and we're going to go over everything you have to do with scripts and with attributes. Let's get into it. First, let's address all option one informational message users. You can use the integrations tab. If you are option one, you can use it because we do not need to make any edits to the attributes on this script. You can use it, you can use it, you can use it. Option two or three, you cannot use the integrations tab. You have to have the full script here on your page. Why? We need to add an attribute to it to make sure that it doesn't load initially when a user visits your site. That's GDPR compliant. So option two or three, let's continue on with that. If you are only an option one user, the only thing you have to do is go and grab the script. Go copy this script and you are going to go and paste it after the other scripts. So we have our Google Analytics, we have our Facebook Pixel, and we have our FinSuite Cookie Consent. That's it. Option one, save, publish, you are finished. Let's go through option two and three. Option three is what most of you are probably using. So let's make sure that that's super clear. I will go and remove that script and I'll go back to the docs up to option three. All options, option one, two, and three are all the same script file. The only difference is an attribute on it that is called FSCC mode. And we have FSCC mode informational, opt in and opt out. We're using the opt in method because that's option three and that's cookie compliant. So here we go, FSCC mode opt in, we have the, the file and now we have cookie consent on the site. We have to make sure that our scripts don't run. There is another step here and it's really important because by default, our Google Analytics and our Facebook Pixel will fire when somebody goes and loads the page. I load the page, Google Analytics will run, Facebook Pixel will run. We cannot do that because that's not GDPR compliant. The user has to specifically say, I accept cookies and then we can run these. So what do we have to do? We have to add type equals FSCC. Type equals FSCC. This is going to be put on every script tag that issues cookies. Again, every script tag that issues cookies. So if you're using something like Google Optimize or Optimizely or HubSpot or any of these other scripts that are going to give users cookies and start tracking them, that needs one of these attributes because we have to prevent them from loading on the page. So I'll go copy this type equals FSCC. I'm going to paste it in this script. Anytime we see a script here, Facebook pixel in this script, and you can see that these turn black, that's okay. What it's actually doing is telling the script that this is not JavaScript and that way it doesn't load. So what our system does is turns on and off this JavaScript script based on what the user has selected with their preference settings. And we are going to remove no script tags. We're removing no script tags because they are not GDPR compliant because they are going to run on the page without JavaScript. And that means they are going to give users tracking without their consent. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this no script tag. And now we are looking good. We are starting to become very cookie compliant here. I'll go and save these changes, make sure we are good with these. And now I'm going to go and add the categories. Let's go to the preference manager. Here I'm in the docs, I'm in the preference manager, and we have 
different options here for a user turning on and off marketing, personalization, and analytics cookies. So how do we define what a marketing script is, what a personalization script is, and what an analytics script is? The user has to be able to select these different options to be GDPR cookie compliant. They need the category selection, so that's what we have to give them. So we can do that through data attributes. Let's go to the attribute section and let's see this working. Here we go. We have our marketing toggle, personalization toggle, analytics toggle. No. Here we go. There we are. Other attributes. We have the script tag of third-party scripts. That's our Google. That's our Facebook. And we're going to apply an FSCC categories equals the name of that category. So here we have type equals FSCC. We just added that. Now we'll do the FSCC categories equals marketing. I'll just go copy paste this whole thing and I will go and add this to this. And I'll change it to analytics because this is analytics. Analytics. Great. So I'll go and add this also to this. And this one, we will make sure that it's marketing. FSCC categories equals marketing. You can also apply multiple categories. So let's say your Facebook pixel is marketing and analytics, which it is. We can go analytics. Great. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. We're done. We've just added the type. We have added the categories. And we have our script here. We have the components on the page. All the attributes are on those components. And now when we go and publish our site, we're going to see this working. Let's go and open up this page and actually watch the cookies not be served until I accept. We have the live build open that we've just been working on. I'm going to open up Inspector and I'm going to show you how cookies are not loading on the page on initial load. So let's load this page. This is a brand new load. Great, this is coming in. And now I'm going to inspect. And in the inspect, I'm going to go to application. And here in application, we have storage and we have cookies. I'll zoom in here so you see what's going on, but absolutely not that much. And I'll even zoom in here. Great. So look at this. We have cookies and I don't see any of them here. I'll go and deny first. Let's make sure we do not accept cookies. We don't want them. No cookies just showed here. So now I will go and click on this preference manager. And now I'm going to see that nothing is selected. But I'm going to now allow all cookies and watch what happens. I've allowed the cookies and look at everything run. We have Facebook, we have Google, and everything is now here for the user. So we've fired our Facebook, we've fired our Google, and there we go. Now this is working. And I'll, I'll say that this is cookie compliant. That is what cookie compliance is all about, making sure that the user has the option to accept and deny, we have just denied them. And now if I were to go and reload this page, we do not have any cookies. The only cookie that we have is the FinSuite cookie consent cookie, which is an essential cookie to record the user's cookie consent preferences, which is deny. So we're saying, hey, this user does not want cookies. They are not interested in them. And because of that, we give them a cookie to make sure we do not load the scripts in the future. And if I were to go and allow, there we go. They're all back. If I go and reject, let's go and reload. See you later. That's it working. We've just copy and pasted. We have just added a few attributes to our scripts. And now we have a fully GDPR cookie compliant system. Thanks for watching. Check out more FinSuite videos to keep learning Webflow.